Hitchens' argument is really hard to pin down, but I think I've boiled it down to the essentials. Hitchens argues, essentially, that all arguments for the supernatural or for God are essentially the same, and there's only two different types of people that argue for the existence of God or the supernatural, the presuppositalist and the evidentialist. The presuppositalist just assumes that God exists or that supernatural things happen and argues for it based on scripture or what have you. The evidentialist argues based upon whatever evidence they have for the supernatural or for God. Hitchens says that he thinks it's charming that people have this evidentialist. After all, why should somebody that has faith need evidence? Isn't the whole point of faith to not need evidence? Now, if this is the correct thrust of his argument, then essentially he is defining faith to mean belief without warrant or belief without evidence, which Craig does not fall into that category. A presuppositionalist would, but not Craig or other evidentialists. He says this is a progress. In other words, looking for evidence is a good thing to do, and I agree. Now, is Hitchens' point that all the arguments are the same and therefore invalid? That can't possibly be, because if that is his point, and all atheistic arguments are essentially the same, then that would make his points uh, also invalid. I think Hitchens wants to draw attention to evidence-seeking, rather than drawing attention to the type or style of debate itself. He says that it's a progress that people are looking for evidence, but apparently he's unsatisfied with the type of evidence that they're looking for. Hitchens then digs deep into evolution, and I can speculate from looking at his entire argument in whole that essentially his argument is because evolution, therefore not God, another DS. So essentially Hitchens' whole argument rests upon the notion or idea that it's just too ridiculous to think that God would have used evolution, and if you're willing to have that much faith, then I'm not even going to argue with you, because supposedly there is no argument against you. Either God or evolution. You can't have both in Hitchens' uh, perspective. So the whole argument that Hitchens has is a DS. A, evolution, or B, God. Because of A, not B. And if that's true, and the either-or statement is true, then his conclusion is valid. Craig does respond to this, so I can't give Hitchens a point here. That's not to say that Craig's response to this gets a point necessarily, but Hitchens, because it's been responded to, can't get the point either. His next point is that isn't it rather arrogant to think that God used evolution and the whole universe just to make us. Okay, if it's arrogant, so? Is his argument here, because it's arrogant, therefore it's false? If that's his point, I'm going to have to give him a negative point on that, but I'm not sure that that is his argument. I think he's just pointing out that it's arrogant to think that we're that special, and that still doesn't argue against God at all. Even if it is arrogant to suppose that we're unique and created, that doesn't necessarily falsify that we were created. I really don't want to straw man Hitchens here, so I just don't feel justified in giving him a negative technical point. But if you feel that that is his argument, or part of it, then here would be a proper time for you to give him a negative point. This point that Hitchens brings up is very, very interesting. If Hitchens could prove that this point is true, if Hitchens could swing down the metaphysical, the philosophical hammer on this point, he would win this debate. And so would all atheists who came after him, because all they would have to do is quote Hitchens. This is a redefining of the word atheist type of argument. 
The problem here is that the definition of atheism must be agreed upon by both contestants before they enter the debate. If both parties have a different view of what it means to say atheist, they must reconcile that before engaging in debate. Thus, if Hitchens can nail down that atheism doesn't mean what Craig is trying to make it mean, Hitchens will win this debate. Unfortunately for Hitchens, he doesn't do that. Now, it's really important that both people go in with the same definition in mind. If this is what atheism is supposed to be defined as, or maybe we need a new word to mean this group of words on the screen, then in either case, that word has to be what the person calls themselves, and they have to give the definition of it, or both contestants for the debate must agree upon the definition of atheism before engaging in the debate. This is a problem. If this is true, again, Hitchens will win. If he can make this point shine, if he can give arguments for it rather than just say that this is so, um, then he could potentially win the debate based upon a fallacy of mis understanding before the debate began. So he would win on a technical level by showing that the debate itself is invalid due to his opponent's misunderstanding and mishandling of the word atheist. Now Hitchens does expound upon this idea that Craig is mishandling the word of atheist in the following segment here. This is really interesting to read through listen to and analyze because essentially Hitchens is arguing that this is the definition of atheism and that there is no such word as atheist or atheism but if there was Hitchens would be that. Again interesting to analyze but not really part of the debate itself. Oh I believe statement. I'm gonna have to award a negative one technical point here you don't need to argue a statement of belief. If he doesn't believe this following statement, that's fine. It's interesting, but it's pretty irrelevant. We're not arguing beliefs, we're supposed to be arguing facts, I thought. In fact, Hitchens' entire point is to argue about facts rather than beliefs, isn't it? If so, then this point is completely irrelevant and invalid. Negative one technical point. This statement's going to earn him another negative one technical point because you can disprove that there's such a force by showing that it's logically incoherent, by showing that there is some other force at work that surpasses this force. There's all sorts of ways that you could argue against this, but if he's saying he can't show it empirically, then he's right. But he didn't say that. So, negative one point again. Hitchens' next point is very interesting. And it almost constitutes as a good argument, at least against a deity that cares, which would then go against Christian theism, which would then defeat his opponent. He says you can't get from deism to theism except by a series of extraordinary generous true self assumptions. But he doesn't really give an argument for that. He just says it. Where's your argument? I want to give you a point. I really do. Give me an argument. As if hearing my cries for an argument, Hitchens finally gives me one. And it's one that he's going to get a technical point for. He uses Dr. Craig's own words against him to show a point that he's making. Hitchens says that even if you have an evidence list, even at their core, they are basing their beliefs on faith. And he quotes Craig directly and says, Should a conflict arise between the witness of the Holy Spirit to the fundamental truth of the Christian faith and beliefs based on argument and evidence, then it is the former which must take precedence over the latter. He adds, not vice versa, but a good editor who told you didn't have to put vice versa in it's clear enough as it is. I'll say it again. And Hitchens quotes it again. 
His point is that it's a priori belief. It must be believed. It can't not be believed. It can't be a maybe. It must be a must. And that Craig is essentially, even though presenting himself as an evidentialist, is in fact basing his beliefs on faith, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, if you will. Craig does respond to this, but he just doesn't do so well. Hitchens gets the technical point on this one. Finally, an argument I can sink my teeth into. Next time, more Hitchens, more analysis, more technical points at stake. Who will win? Who will lose? Stay tuned and find out.